So we just started to discuss this in the last lecture. Um, we're gonna, this is our first application of geomechanics. We're going to try to understand uh, if a at a given pore, pore pressure and a given tectonic stress field, uh, an angle of a fault, will the fault slip? Or what increase in pore pressure will cause the fault to slip? And we measure the stress field. We've, we haven't talked in detail how we measure it, but we know the, th the three, you know, the sort of four things that we need to characterize the stress field. What, can anyone answer that question? What are the four things we need to answer to characterize the stress field? Three principal stresses in one horizontal direction, right? Because we know SV, vertical direction, is always a principal stress. So if we know that, the fact that they're orthogonal, um, we can characterize the stress field. So unfortunately, um, our stress field is almost never aligned with a fault. Mm -hmm. And so the stress field could be, have some orientation like this, right? And not necessarily align with any coordinate frame that we would place on the fault. And the mo you know, a natural coordinate frame to place on the fault would be with respect to sort of the azimuth of the frame. Right? And we'll talk more about that coordinate frame we place on the fault later. But for now, uh, we have this arbitrary um, principal stress field that, we've, that we measure. I mean, it, it's not arbitrary in the sense that it, 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 it comes from the tectonic stresses, but um, it's arbitrary with respect to the, the fault. And so to go from this stress field into, uh, and we all remember that stress is coordinate frame dependent, right? So in order to go from the principal stress field and resolve it on the fault to understand if it's going to slip or not, what we're going to do is we're going to take it through an intermediate frame. And that intermediate frame is a very convenient one. Um, that is uh, the one that is aligned with the cardinal axes, right? So north, east, and down. And why is it north, east, and down? Why is it not north, west, and down? Because I want to have a right-hand coordinate system. Right-hand coordinate system. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to measure our principal stresses in the field uh, in direction. So we, we're going to take those as a given. We're going to take them into this intermediate frame. And then from this intermediate frame, we'll go into the frame of the fault, and then be able to do determine whether the faults are going to slip or not. And the nice thing, or at least one nice thing here, is that this intermediate frame is going to be the same later when we do wellbore mechanics. So again, in, in wellbore mechanics, we'll have an arbitrary stress field with respect to the wellbore, and we're going to use this intermediate frame. So we're going to bring everything back into this intermediate coordinate frame before we go into the frame of the fault or into the frame of the wellbore. Okay. And to do that, we have to set up a series of rotations, OK? And so this is how we define the angles between our intermediate frame, northeast and down, and the principal stresses. And this is a little bit difficult figure to decipher. I've taught this class about four times, five times maybe, and I, I think this thing right here is the hardest concept for some reason for the students to, um, to get. Right? And so there are three isolated rotations here. You see it defined by the three angles, alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay? When, all, when alpha, beta, and gamma are all zero, the two coordinate frames are aligned with one another. Right? S1 is in north direction, uh, S2 is in the east direction, and S3 is down. Okay? And so when they're all zero, so if you can, you can visualize that, uh, that'll help. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to do one isolated rotation at a time. Okay? And the isolated rotations are defined about one of the axes of our geographical frame. And so can anyone tell me what axis the angle alpha is the rotation about? Alpha is an angle that rotates about 
northeast or down? Down, right? Okay. So again, northeast or down. And which, and then, well, the easiest way then to determine what a positive rotation is, is to use your right hand. Right? That's why we want right handed coordinate points. So we use our right hand, and we know uh, that the, rotate, the angle is defined about the down axis. All we have to do is use our right hand and stick our thumb in the direction of down and curl your fingers. Stick your thumb in the direction of down and curl your fingers. That, gives, that defines the positiveness of that angle. Oh, S, S, V, the vertical stress is always down. But remember, S1, S2, and S3 are defined by their magnitudes. And it, and it could be, depending on if it's a normal faulting regime, a reverse faulting regime, or a strike-slip regime, it could be that S3 is not S, V. It could be that it's one or the other. Okay. So, good question. Um, so let's work through this to define the rotation matrices, and then I hope I have something uh, prepared that, that helps uh, if it's not clear uh, which of those angles and how you do these rotations, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take one at a time in isolation. So the first thing we're going to do is imagine that we're in, in, the, you know, in a blimp looking down on the Earth. So we're looking down on the axis of north and east, and we're going to just consider the rotation that, that deals with alpha, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first draw north and east, and then we have S1 and S2. So, I hope if we Go back in between. I hope that everyone can see that, right? So if we're in the sky looking down on north and east, then the angle alpha is uh, defined as this angle here. Right? It's also that angle there. Okay. So then what we want to do is we want to write S1 and S2 in terms of the components of north and east. So we looked at this before when we studied, when we had the rotation matrices from a perspective of linear algebra and just looking at an arbitrary way that um, that vectors transform, right? So we have S1 is equal to the cosine of alpha times the, the component in the north direction, times the component in the east direction, times the sine of alpha. S2 is equal to minus the sine of alpha times the component in the north direction plus east times the cosine of alpha. And S3 just for completeness, S3 is down, right? So in this picture, uh, S3 and down are going into the board. Again, right hand rule. Any questions about that? So for convenience later, um, you know, we, we spent a good bit of time talking about linear, linear algebra, and that's because it makes things easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to write these guys. In matrix form, and I'm going to use a shorthand, so C is cosine, S is sine, just so I don't have to can speed up a little bit. So that is what we're going to call, that matrix we'll call R1. Okay? So we'll go back 
Now we're going to look at the rotation beta. So what, what geographic axis is the rotation beta about? East, okay? So and it, you can define it positive. The reason it's defined positive as it's drawn there is because if I stick my thumb in the direction of east, my right hand, and I curl my fingers, that defines the positive rotation beta, okay? So returning here, I'll then draw north and down. And then I have S1 and S3 this time, and this is the angle beta. Everybody see that? So again, now we're looking at the east. We're looking down this axis, and then we'd see north and down, and we'd see S1 and S3. So we can write the equations just like we did before up there. I'm just going to go ahead and skip the step and write them in matrix form. Okay. So we have there S1, S2, S3. Is equal to cosine beta 0 minus sine beta. 0, 1, 0, sine beta, 0, cosine beta, north, east, down. And this guy I'm going to call R2. So then next and last, we have the angle gamma, and I'm going to ask you again, but it should be obvious because there are three isolated rotations, one about east, each axis, right? We've already done east and down, so what angle is gamma about? North, right? So the reason it's defined as positive down is because I'm going to stick my thumb in the direction of north and curl my fingers. And this one takes a little imagination as it's drawn because you got, you know, the thing to do would would be that if alpha and beta are zero, then then uh, then S2 is in the direction of east. So then if I stick my fingers in the direction of north and curl my fingers, it's going to rotate S2 down from east. Again, this is the hardest thing that you know this this sort of class. Uh, that, that, it, that most students uh, have trouble with in this class is these rotations. And it's partly because you can't draw this figure very well and, and show all the angles and everything. Um, as it's drawn here, it's, f it's fairly close to what's drawn in Zoback's book. Okay, I, try, I, try, I, drew, I redrew it myself, but I, I try to draw it as close to the way it looks in Zoback's book. Okay, so... Again, here we have, we're looking at north, so we have east and down. We have S2 and S3, and this is the angle gamma. Again, I'll skip the, skip the step of writing the equations out. We have S1, S2, S3. I'll just write in the matrix form, 1, 0, 0, 0, cosine gamma, sine gamma, 0 minus sine gamma, cosine gamma. North, east, down. Okay. Now, then to combine all of those, to go from, um, well, 
ultimately what we want to do is we want to go f take the stress as it's given, the principal stresses, and take it into the geographic frame. And we learned when we were learning about linear algebra about how tensors, or in this case, three by three matrices, transform. And they transform via rotation matrices, which in this case we're going to call RG transpose S RG, right? Where RG is the combination, we didn't define this, but that's R3, is the combination R3, R2, R1, right? So remember we learned this, how matrices form, uh, transpose. We, we might have shown this as, uh, you know, it was Q inverse the matrix Q, right? In this case, Q is just RG. And the reason that I can take a transpose instead of an inverse is because all rotation matrices are unitary. That is, their transpose is their inverse, okay? So, problem is I have to multiply these three matrices full of sines and cosines together. We, we know how to multiply matrices, but I am not going to do that by hand, especially all the simplifications, right? So, uh, let's... Um, Jump over to Mathematica real quick. And just bear with me a second. So we're going to define uh, R1 as the matrix cosine alpha uh, sine alpha. Minus sign there. Um, and one thing I like about Mathematica is we can look at things uh, like they'd look on a piece of paper, right? So we can to make sure that we typed it up right, right? So that looks like what we wrote on a piece of paper, right? Do the same thing for R2, cosine, uh, beta. So looks like what we have there. And we'll do the last one, R3 is equal to That looks right. Okay, so then R G is just R three, R two, R one, and in Mathematica the dot is a matrix multiplication shorthand. And so then if we look at what that looks like, there we get this big matrix, and you can see why I didn't want to do it by hand because it's pretty pretty long, and, and there's some simplifications that go in there, too. All right, so this is our G. This is our rotation matrix. And 